So there we go. Yes. Welcome everyone to game number one. There is a little bit of stutter over here. And I would imagine that's probably because of something with the with an OBS, but it's going to stabilize in just one moment. We had this a little bit during Warlords. But it usually stabilizes pretty quickly. So nothing to worry about. There we go. And yeah, for game number one. Then it's going to be Hindustanis versus Hindustanis for both these guys. And we are opening up on Double Arabia. This is very interesting because usually this map is utilized for the tiebreaker. If I'm not mistaken. I think it's meant to be game 5 in this situation. If I'm not wrong, I I'm not really sure that's the case for this round as well or not. Because in the single elimination round of 16, I remember Double Arabia was specifically for, for tiebreakers. But maybe now that we are in the double elimination round of 16, it changed. Regardless though, let me uh, change this really quickly so you know who... Is VV? I mean, you can know because the other player is Dark, right? But let's also fix the name for Dark over there. Try to make it a little bit more readable. Regardless, though, with Hindustanis, both these guys will have the same bonuses, the exact same bonuses from cheaper villagers from the Dark Age throughout the Imperial Age, right? To faster attacking camels, to extra armor on gunpowder units, and then for the team bonus, we have for Hindustan is both light cavalry and camel rider units deal two bonus damage against buildings, which is great. Which is all good and dandy. So we probably should need to <laughs> change also the tournament information because this is not warlords anymore. Not for today anyway. We're going to have some more of that goodness tomorrow. This is double cup three. There we go. And this is round of sixteen. Uh, best of five as well. There we are. Cheaper villagers must be the thing here. Yeah, it's gotta be Shirley. With double TC start, you already save so much from the get-go. Compared to a standard civilization that is definitely worth it, so... Players will be going for it, and... Uh, I'm not really sure if I have anything in ways of prediction for this series. Because Dark is, I think, probably a little bit higher compared to B, but, but he's been kind of struggling in the tournament, so. Maybe on the other hand, uh, being the veteran he is, he's completely used to playing tournaments, he's not going to have any issues with it, mentally or otherwise. So, I think that kind of evens the waters a little bit. But anyway... I guess we'll see very soon for the time being. Both players are looking very, very close. If you take a look at idle TC time is about the same. Take a look at gather economy time is a little bit higher for Dark. So it seems like his economy has been a little bit more efficient. And with the village account that we have at this point in time, I would imagine both these guys will be on their way to the fuel age and to the castle age pretty soon as well. If he's got a better map, yeah, we can take a look at it. Let's check. So, for the bull player, we have both these goals forward on the right hand side. One of the stones forward. And then we have one gold on the back and one stone on the back. Then on the left hand side, his base is going to have all three golds forward. And both stones forward. So, uh, Vivi's got just the one stone in the back and the one gold on the back. But he's going for walls. Uh, closer to his base than the gold is on the back, so he's not really going to be able to secure that one. Although he will try to secure this gold in front, it's not ideal because usually you don't want to utilize the gold as part or resources as part of your walls if you want to be completely safe. As we could potentially see skirmishers, for instance. Both players are to go, going to go for scouts or for camels and then at some sort of range units, we could see the villagers being pushed away from here. And Dark, on the other hand, he's got a back goal on the left-hand side, up in the north. And no extra back resources. His bases are closer. I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference, personally, because of the mobility aspect. And they're both going to be going for camels. But it could be a factor. I guess we're going to find out. 
interestingly enough, the walls that he's going for, he would actually be able to connect if he just invested a few extra resources over here, going for the walls from the left to the right. Hey, our base, Wendigar as well. Welcome, guys. Welcome to right hand side. Go forward for dark. He's got one goal on the side, on the right hand side, and one stone, kind of backish. He could potentially take advantage of. You see me from falling asleep at meetings? <laughs> yeah, no problem. You know, yesterday I was actually going to stream a 20 GNT because there was a series taking place. Uh, that's usually a fairly late starting time for a stream of mine, but. With this patch, you cannot really bank on record the games to cast series, so I was just going to cast the games live whenever they took place, right? Which is why I'm starting the stream much earlier today than usual. I was supposed to use some record the games, but yeah, uh, that one got rescheduled. Then there was another set earlier today at 3 a.m. GMT, so that was midnight for me. And I was ready to start my stream, but the guys were scheduled. So, <laughs> I was actually going to stream at 3 a.m. GMT today. If it weren't because the guys ended up rescheduling the set. That was going to be fun. That was going to... Allow me to see some of the viewers that usually are never here because of time zones. Namely the Australians. Yeah, the rug bug is awful. I got word that it's... Kind of being reproduced consistently by the devs, so it seems like we are going to have a fix coming eventually. I just don't know when. That is why I'm not casting. Um, th there is another set that took place already that I'm not going to cast until uh, an update comes, and I'm able to cast uh, the whole thing of it. There is also the potential of. Casting the set using record the games if the update does not come before the next round begins. So yeah. Anyway. Well, players are going up to the castle edge already as expected. Usually you see the players go up to the castle edge pretty soon after clicking up to the fuel edge. And the stables are already in place for Vivi. He's got double stables on the right hand side. And up in the north, Dark, he's got the second stable coming up on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, he doesn't really have much of anything else coming up. He has gotten a little bit of extra LTC time. He is taking longer to get both TCs, uh, both, actually, sorry, stables up. He's got some of the upgrades coming in right now. A scale bar the numbers here for Dark. Vivi hasn't gone for it yet. Bloodlands is here for Vivi and is on the way for Dark. And we see uh, Forging coming in for both these guys as well at about the same time. There is also Gold Mining on the way for Dark, which I, which I appreciate. Especially when he's already gone for Scale part of the Armor. It seems like his economy should be in a better spot for him to start putting some pressure fairly early on. So he gets to the Castleage. And the third stable is on the way! Holy crap! And that losing a Villager over here. But managed to get one Villager. So it's going to be... Oh no, that's actually going to be... Oh yeah, yeah, it's going to be a villager, right? So Dark loses a villager, but he takes the scout down. It's not going to make too much of a difference on the double TC start, especially when the castle is already here. And there is potential for extra TCs for both these guys, so I don't think Vivi really achieved too much by taking the villager down over there, but we'll see. Now Dark's going to be the one putting pressure, and he's got the camels on the way. Meanwhile, Vivi... If he's got camels on the way as well, he did start going for camels earlier. He gets one villager on the right-hand side, and he's gonna find yet another one from the red player. Good job from Vivi. And the villager goes down. There we go. Left-hand side. Is trying to breach through. Won't be able to do it. Right hand side. He's got a lot of camels moving forward in dark because he had the stables on the left hand side. He's got to bring these units over to the right hand side to defend himself. 
So there isn't really much of a defender's advantage over here for Dark, and this could be really good for Vivi. Let's take a look. The amount of camera is about the same. Over there, Vivi loses one, so now he goes down to five versus six from Dark, and now he's got the heal advantage, but doesn't turn around to fight. Same upgrades for both these guys as well, with both players already on forging and scale bar than armor. We are still missing chain bar than armor and iron casting. Yeah, this should be going in favor of Dark for sure. He's got a numbers leap. There's an awful trade for Vivi to take! What was he paying attention to? Camels on the left hand side, or actually towards the south on the right hand side? Maybe? So we have one, two steals. Oh, and it's open! And Dark is coming in! He cannot bring the camels on time, but he does get the light cavalry coming in over here and gets one villager down. Cannot get any extra villagers because of the camels anymore. Defensive camels from Vivi. But overall it's going to be a 2-1 to one eco KD favoring the blue players still. And hey Denmark! Hi, hi, welcome. Hope you're doing alright. Here we go. Hey, Anor, as well. Welcome, welcome, as well. Let me know if I'm saying your name correctly because uh, Google Translate told me it was meant to be pronounced Anor, but I don't know it anymore. <laughs> it's Elvish, right? At the very least, some of the Tolkien fans told me it was meant to be uh, Elvish. Nice. Nice conversion. From Vivi. Dark still puts pressure. He cannot breach through, but he might be able to do it right now. 25% faster attacking, and there we go. We realize it's just at the last second, otherwise, he would have gotten breach. And we might still see Dark coming on the right hand side. It's very hard to keep up with this kind of pressure when you have so many units. Knocking on your door on different areas. It's so hard to keep track of everything and keep the walls up Interestingly enough not only is Vivi able to keep up, but then on the right hand side He's got a counter push coming in and in the end Dark is able to get the quick walls up over here just in time as well So he was also paying attention That's not giving the convert the camel down the monk down and Dark's able to defend just fine and then on the left hand side Vivi is able to defend just fine towards his house so so far, so good. Neither of these players has taken too much damage. They are both still pretty close in terms of economy. It's just a military. It's looking much better for Dark as he's gotten a lot of extra units out. Let's take a look at gather economy time here. It's higher for Dark. So it makes sense because he has been able to go for extra military units. His economy has been more efficient. And he's been able to get extra military units because of that. So hard to keep track of everything when you're playing at the double TC start, but... Dark's done a masterful job. He's got chain bar and armor on the way, and Vivi's got iron casting, so that's going to kind of cancel out. Right hand side. Looking very good for Dark. But even uh, with the TC over here, Vivi's going to turn the fight around. And even if Dark was able to get the fight over here, he would be left with too few camels to really do any damage with, so. Yeah, for the time being, it's kind of close for both these guys still. Same military, same work account, for the most part. Vivi's getting a lot of extra little TC time, was getting a lot of extra little TC time earlier, because of the extra TCs. Dark's got two additional TCs as well, so both players on four. Wow, an extra stable is coming in for Dark. He already had three on the left hand side, so this is going to be at the very least five, and he's going for 12 total stables! Vivi, on the other hand, he's got five. If Dark is actually able to sustain production of more than five stables at a time, then he's gonna outproduce uh, Vivi for sure. This could be really bad news for the blue player. Let's check. There we are. Fantastic. Yeah, 
And the Endark ends up cleaning up the units on the right hand side and he's got a forward castle coming in the left. Bibi's reaction over here is swift and appropriate. He's got enough villagers to target each villager from Dark individually, and because he's got the hill over here to work with as well, he should be able to take the villagers down with his own villagers. However, there are some quick walls coming up over here from Dark, where it doesn't matter, the conversions coming in from BB are enough to prevent Dark from doing much of anything, so this castle is getting completely denied. Dark gets pushed back. That was very interesting to see when he was putting pressure on the right hand side, he tried to go for the castle on the left without any sort of defense over here. He's only now bringing some camels, but before. It was completely exposed. Still don't have iron casting. For Dark, still don't have chain bar than armor for Vivi. There we are. Hey, Cold White! Welcome back as well. Defensive castle on the way for Dark in front of his base on the left hand side towards the north. And it's looking like it's going to be a longer one. But he does manage to rake up enough resources to click out to the Imperial Age in a moment though. Although he's kind of missing a building. He's got the resources now. He's got to realize about the building so he's trying to rush a university. But he's gonna be on his way to the Imperial Age pretty soon, while Dark should be on his way to the Imperial Age pretty soon as well. He's kind of lacking a little bit of gold, but if he uses the market and he's, he's using it right now, he should be on his way very soon. Take a look at the resources. Their mind's going for more camels. And BB's already on his way to the Imperial Age, while Dark... Yeah, Dark's gonna finally finish building the castle. He's finally going to finish getting the castle up. Overall, things are looking great for VV as Dark has utilized a lot of the resources he had when he was close to going out to the Imperial Age to get a few extra units out, which sure puts him ahead in military count. But he's going to be significant later to the Imperial Age, and VV is going to be the first player to get access to heavy camels to play Barden armor. Oh, but Dark sneaks in on the left hand side! Finds a few villagers and Vivi kind of falls behind the villager count over here by a little bit though. This is not too hard to catch up for. Uh, he's got only an 8 villager deficiency that he's going to be able to make up for with these 4 TCs in very, very little time. And then on the right hand side, once again, Dark's going to try to get another castle forward. He's got a single villager here. Bunch of extra camels coming in trying to secure the extra villages as well, but it seems like maybe should be able to get a better trade over here. Even with the monks, even with the monks coming in from Dark, it seems like Vivi should be in a better position. So he ends up pushing Dark's villagers, at the very least should end up pushing Dark's villagers away and as expected. Vivi has been able to uh, keep up with the economy still for the most part, and Dark is actually over booming right now a little bit on 151 bills. There we go. Really just here. Now for Vivi. So I've been wondering, is it possible to have two saves per player with two TC starts? No, it's not really possible. But that'll be interesting. So you'll basically be able to play a team game on your own. <laughs> yeah, maybe with open age. And Dark is actually able to get a castle up here. Damn, it's all because of his military production. Once again, take a look at the red player. He's got 16 stables. And Vivi, to defend himself and produce military units, but has got 9 stables only. And boy. Both players starting to crumble over here. Dark might be significant later to the Imperial Age. And maybe might have Heavy Camel coming in in a moment. But it seems to me like he's not really going to be able to keep on holding it. He calls the GG here in the end. Dark's choice of delaying the Imperial Age over here doesn't end up paying off. Well done.
So it's gonna be one nil in favor of Dark. There we are. Let's go and take a look at the achievements before uh, hopping into game number two. Let's see. We'll see first off our military. Very nice KD for Dark in the end. It's going to be better than 7 to 6. For economy, a stronger economy for Dark as well. Collecting a few thousand extra resources. This is what I was fairly caught off guard by. The fact that Dark was struggling to go up to the Imperial Age. And Vivi managed to click up earlier. Despite the fact that Dark had gotten a higher worker uh, or gather economy time counter compared to Vivi. So it seems... As if Vivi ended up sacrificing a lot more of his economy, proportionate, uh, proportionately speaking, compared to the amount of resources he had collected up until that point to go up to the Imperial Age earlier. So Dark had collected more resources, and he was delaying the Imperial Age, so he was able to get more military units out, and Vivi wasn't able to keep up. In the end, ultimately, Dark's higher military production potential ended up taking uh, or getting him this game. Well done. We'll jump into game number two shortly. Well, let's stream a new 32-inch curved monitor. Damn, Colloy, that sounds beautiful. And there we are. Game number two is here. We're going to switch dark over to the red color. So we have blue and red. And we see Franks versus Byzantines. No more mirror matchup, but the very least not for this game. Byzantines for dark will be... An amazing civilization. Wait, was he trying to uh, hunt? Oh, he was trying to hunt the jaguar, but... Fresco. Ah, you can actually harvest meat from these, but he ended up taking it down with the TC. I recall some units, some Gaia units, you would be able to harvest resources from. Um, they would just deplete so quickly. Salve. And he doesn't know about this, right? Yeah, he doesn't really have vision. So he's going around. I do appreciate, though, the fact that Dark is familiar with the map because he's hunting for those Jaguars. He's not accidentally Presto. running into those. You see? He's actually trying to lure them into a TC. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm not really sure about this because I think you can harvest from these, but I think they do rot a lot faster. Uh, and I believe villagers also are able to take the meat from these a lot faster as well. So let's see. Uh, it kind of seems to be depleting a lot sooner. I don't think the villagers are getting that much food out of it. 20. Yeah, it's rotten very quickly. So they're probably unable to get them. <laughs> oh, two! <laughs> Come on, Dark. He ends up kind of wasting two over here. Okay, let's see. Nobody's harvesting from this one. Okay, it's not really rotting that fast. It seems like the gathering rate is significantly faster then. Wait, no, it is rotting. Take a look at that. One, two, three. It is rotting faster. Anyway, Dark seems to be quite purposeful about that. Vivi, on the other hand, I don't think he's gotten a single Jaguar yet. So he's just going to try and take advantage of the berries instead, which will only last him so long. And obviously are not quite as efficient as his collecting from this a few tiles away from the TC. This map, for anybody who might not be familiar with it, is not only going to have Jaguars, but also at the center, we have a lot of fishing. We have box turtles over here. No, it's chore fish. And these waterfalls over here, I, I think these are supposed to represent something else. I don't remember exactly what it is, but this map is meant to represent a, ca a cave, a cavern. So I would guess maybe this is... I don't know. The water influx from the cave. From above, right? As if we had the surface on top of the water, perhaps. And it's falling from there. And yeah, then towards the corners, we actually have gold. We have stone. And we have some food. And it was the other way around that than what I was describing. At the center, you have fish. And then at the corners, you have the minerals. Not the other way around. I don't know, but the scouts are wet now. <laughs> Never seen this map before. It's great. 
It's great, and I love that Double Cup 3 has got such an extensive map pool. There is a lot for us to, to see, for sure. Salve. Hey, okay. Let's see if he realizes about this at all. Okay. The villagers automatically go into start collecting fruit from this, and now Vivi's like, Ah, oh. oh, so you can you can collect from them. Ah, oh, all right, but it's unfortunately a little bit too late for him to really take advantage of it. He's already made a transition to the fish at the center, so this is kind of, I guess, a nice tea for him, but not something he's going to pursue anymore, and probably something he'll keep in mind when playing on this map again next time around. Hopefully. Village on the way, both players going up on over 37 workers, uh, so we'll see the castle age come up pretty soon as well. Dark. Dark has been struggling, interestingly enough, despite the fact that he's the only player who's been collecting from the Jaguars, he's struggled to keep up with villager production. He's gotten a lot of extra LTC time and BB's going up earlier. And he's going up with extra workers compared to Dark. It's actually going up on five extra workers. So with Dark Silo TC time. Yeah, it's just gotta be lack of food. Unfortunately for him. We know that he's able to keep up with double TCs. We already saw him in the previous game do pretty well. A little bit better than BB even at times. So I don't think that's necessarily the only issue for him. I think it was probably he didn't have quite as many food workers. And we didn't really talk about the civilizations too much, but Dark with Byzantines is going to have a very strong save over here against Franks. It's going to be good. You have uh, fully upgraded Tarbalisters for Byzantines. You get cheaper Skirm, Spear, Camel Rider line units. Beautiful. This is really good though from BB. He gets a villager down from Dark. First blood right there. And BB was already a hit by about six workers. Now that's going to extend to seven additional workers for him. Plus, he might be able to get another villager down over here. It seems like it's going to be the case. Yes, sir. Another one down. And he doesn't lose a single scout. Plus, he is off to the castle age now. And Dark, Dark is not on his way to the castle age just yet. As a matter of fact, he's going for Wheelbarrow. So that's going to delay him a little bit. If he does end up clicking out to the castle age from the TC, he's got Wheelbarrow on the way. That's going to delay his castle age so much. And if he, go out, if he goes out to the castle age with the other TC, well, he wouldn't be able to produce villagers for a little bit, right? But he doesn't really have the resources right now. He's just going for scouts and spearmen. It seems like he's expecting Vivi to stick to scout production in the fuel age and to go for full aggression over here. Little does he know that Vivi is actually on his way to the next stage already. So Dark is not really able to keep up quite as well over here. That's for the most part because of the villager discrepancy between both these guys. And welcome to everyone who's coming into the stream for the first time, dropping a follow. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying so far. Big shout out to Eliar and Huevo Coyoto for hosting this tournament and for making it open casting as well. If you want to get more information about the tournament, you can do exclamation mark DC2, DC3. That's going to give you a link to the Liquipedia page, I believe. And I'm not really sure if it gives you a link to Eliar's stream as well, but you can go and drop a follow uh, for her as well. As she's hosting this. Lots of villages and food for both. As of this point, yes. Vivi will be in the castle age in about 10 seconds. Dark is going to be in the castle age in 2 minutes and 10 seconds. So he's behind by quite a lot. And Vivi's already got him there. He's going for the pikeman upgrade. Plenty of action at the center. 30c on the way for Vivi at the center. And I love it. Even if he does not end up going for... Uh, a lot in terms of villager production from this one. It's still going to be great for protecting villagers, right? Because it's got a lot of ills over here. It's pike versus pike. Why not knights? Because of the pikes. 
This is actually a, a something that happens quite a bit over here. Something else that we see happen many times is militia line units, especially when you have Bulgarians on this map, which is a popular civilization for it. But uh, yeah, for the time it's just going to be pikemen versus spearmen, so the units from Vivi are significantly stronger. He's got scale mail armor, although that's also the case for dark, so this is just going to be uh, the only difference over here is going to be the pikemen upgrade. We have forging for both these guys as well. And Dark is trying to defend himself, but he's been taking a lot of losses, and now we see some knights coming in as we don't have too many spears left from Dark anymore. How many stables do we get for the bull player so far? He's got a single stable, he's got a monastery, and then he's got double barracks. So he's going for a lot of pikes, he's going for some monks, and he's going for some knights. Well, Dark is getting the pikeman upgrade as he finally gets to the castage, but he's already so far behind even if the military count is looking somewhat even the worker count is not even close we have a 12 worker lead for vv as of this point and it might actually go significantly higher than this as we still have the knights roaming around we have the monks coming over snatching villagers away from dark and adding them to vivi's ranks then of course the pikemen over here can also potentially get some villagers down from Dark, although Dark's getting a lot of extra pikemen out, and Bibi won't be able to make a play for knights anymore. And the pikemen will be the only way for him over here. In the monks, pikes and monks. I love the look of this map as well. So many of uh, the maps for this tournament, they are just so pretty to look at. I guess they could potentially still go for knights, Vivi, mainly. Could potentially still go for knights, and I think what he ideally would want to do uh, would be send the knights forward and try to take advantage of the mobility, right? There's a, a lot of exposed economy over here, and there are not pikemen around this area from Dark at all. There is not a single pikeman to be seen on the right-hand side either. So he doesn't necessarily need to just focus at the center. He could potentially go for some knights and then send those forward, try to take advantage of the mobility. Meanwhile, for Dark, of course, it's just taken to Pikeman. He does pay fewer resources for these. He's gotta be careful. His economy is also smaller, so it might not really represent that much of, of an advantage versus BB. The, uh, the flashing over here is going to be Gaia units. We can see that be the case over here. I think Dark was collecting from here a moment ago, and th there was also some flashing. There we go. Fantastic. Man, Tarn's upgrade's coming in for Vivi. Interesting to see. He's got supplies on the way as well. Oh lord, <laughs> it's so hard to see the units from behind the waterfalls. I didn't know you could even... Walk underneath that. I don't remember seeing a lot of people doing this in the previous editions of the tournament. And there we go. We finally see some damage coming in from Dark against Vivi. The red player seems to have a lot of extra units at the center, at the very least, a lot of pikes. And Vivi is bringing some knights over here, but yeah. The Where are the pikemen though? From Dark! Oh boy! Dark ends up losing a villager over there. There we go! He's bringing the pikemen over here. And Vivi's just roaming around them. Vivi's gotta do this! He's gotta try and pursue the economy around the starting TCs from Dark to try and take advantage of the mobility. These pikes cannot defend everywhere. So we have enough right now for Dark that he'll be able to hold on at the center against however many knights Vivi brings over. But not on the sides. And Lone Sword's coming in right now for V as well. So that could potentially be very good. Let's see how many barracks the blue player's got. He's got two barracks only. Right hand side. Yeah, the knights are roaming around from VV. He might be able to find some villagers over here. Especially if he's also targeting 
Oh wow, Dark's paying attention here. Damn. That is really good. This is something that he probably wouldn't have been able to do without Byzantines because Byzantines get Town Watch and Town Patrol for free and he's got a lot of extra vision from them from those buildings otherwise. He probably would have would have lost a few over there before realizing or at the very least the knights would have gotten a lot closer to his villagers before he realized by taking a look at the minimap. So we see two villagers going down over here from dark and Vivi cannot really do too much so might as well just get out of here. Yeah, there we go. He's going to bail. And then on the left hand side. That is a lot of pressure coming in from Dark. Come on, man! <laughs> you cannot really see much of anything over here. Take a look at the villagers. They're just turning into a shadow, into a silhouette. Behind the, the waterfalls. Yeah, but the Magnal does go down, I think. And BB is under a lot of pressure over here. The Pikeman play! In the end works out beautifully for Darkin while he was behind the work count by quite a lot. Up until fairly recently. And you can see that Vivi even managed to get over an hour of extra gallery economy time. The blue player has been unable to fight the pikeman off and it's taken so long to get the lone swordsman out. The Dark is already getting a lead for himself. He's got an ahead in work account by about 15 and he's got a lot of extra militarians as well. Looking great for the great for the red player right now, and it didn't seem like it was going to be the case from before. Especially now that VV is going for just lone swords, Dark can actually make a play for knights, and he's reacted beautifully to this. He's got knights, he's got scorpions on the way. VV's got just lone swords, no more pikemen anymore. So knights from Dark are going to dominate. Red player has got the best army composition over here, and it's not even close. Although I would definitely like to see some extra magnets come out. For the blue player, I think I'm gonna have to install a mod to remove the waterfalls though. Because we cannot see what's going on behind this. But yeah, I love that they have shadow. It's beautiful. And then Dark, he's going for it again! He's going for another Bolty Castle! And Vivi, well, he doesn't really have much to defend against this it's both because dark didn't really know what was around the left hand side what vivi had to work with for all he knew he would have been able to go for a counter castle or he might have had a much stronger economy over there with extra tcs a lot of extra villagers to react against the castle drop but he went for it in the end and he got away with it meanwhile vivi's trying to get a castle up at the center he's got a castle on the left hand side protecting the minerals and the wood there's an extra TC coming up over here. So he basically gives up on this one. Basically gives up on this base. And just gonna be uh, trying to focus and prioritizing the, the left hand side. So now Dark's gonna be here. And he could still go for a castle. Yeah, there we go. That's going to put pressure against Vivi's economy. And Vivi's reacting extremely quickly as well. Bringing a lot of villagers to try and prote protect this area. Tried to get zone castle up and try to target the villagers from dark, but I think the castle is coming out for the red player. So this could come down to a Pitar battle. Well, dark's not really trying to force build the castle though. He's got to do it. But yeah, he should be able to get it up. Here we are. Castle's up for him. Baby. He's getting his own castle as well. And if this comes down to a Star battle, it should be going in favor of BB. At the very least, he does have two castles over here to work with. There's only one from Dark, but that's not the case. Is Dark gonna try to play for the Imperial Age? He could, you know. With Byzantines, it gets a 33% discount to go up. He's got a stronger economy right now, 112 villagers already. So he could very well try to prioritize going out to the Imperial Age. It wouldn't take too long. Sure, he doesn't have the resources right now. But it would probably take a minute and a half, two minutes of savings. And then he'd be able to go up. Yeah, still nothing coming up from the castles on the left hand side.
Oh, and Dark's going for yet another one. Up in the north, and Vivi. Vivi did not chop through up in the north, so this is all he's got to work with around this area. He's gonna react. And yeah, honestly, he cannot really do too much over here by the looks of it. He doesn't have the resources. He's trying to buy the stone, but he's gonna tank his economy in order to get a castle up over here. You know what? The castle, whatever castle Bibi might be able to get up over here wouldn't really suffice to prevent Dark from getting his own castle up, so he would still end up getting pushed away from here. In the end, there is a counter castle on the way for Bibi! And what a game! Both these guys going for so many fortifications. Dark ends up just bailing from here, so it doesn't seem like he'll be able to do too much damage, you know, and if Dark plays his cards right, he might be able to get a defensive castle up over here before Vivi's able to go for yet another one, but I'm not really sure. With this castle coming up, maybe we'll be able to start going for a few extra throwing axemen, and he'll be able to put pressure against the economy from Dark. He should already know what this economy consists of. He doesn't yet, but he's going to find out right now. He sees the TC. If he moves over the right hand side, he's going to realize about the Lumberjacks over here and how much exposed economy uh, Dark's got right now. And it's just mayhem! Mayhem on Aslan! Just so many castles! Holy crap! Yeah, there we go. we just gotta be careful. He's losing villagers over here to the TC, almost for free. And then up in the north we see another castle drop coming in from Dark. He's got 125 versus 77 workers. Military count is a little higher for VV and he could potentially utilize that. To catch up and worker counter at the very least bring Dark down. To the same worker count over here but... Yeah boy! Here we go. Yeah, that's a lot of villagers going down for Dark, and this is what I was talking about. There's a lot of exposed economy over here for the red player to potentially lose to Vivi's units. It's gonna be the first player to get access to yet another castle. It seems like that's gonna be Vivi. He already has enough. So he could go for one over here, and he's going for it! As doubt so graciously blesses us all with this beautiful smile over here we see the castle come up for Vivi and we see a counter castle coming in for Dark over here but Vivi's going to get the castle out for sure he's got a lot of throwing next minute while it was looking much better for Dark just a few minutes ago I'm not really sure that's going to be the case for much longer oh boy the throwing next minute were forward on time he would have been able to get a bunch of villagers down over here not deny the castle the castle was still coming up for dark but he would have been able to get a few extra villagers and, and potentially try to catch up a little bit more right that we still behind the work count by a lot by a lot and then on the left though dark loses one of his forward castles to two ramps from bb to the castle fire yeah on the right hand side Seems like Dark's most likely going to end up losing a few extra villagers over here, but still looks so much stronger compared to Vivi. At the very least, I'm taking a look at the worker count, interestingly enough. Overall population significantly higher for Dark as well. Well, the military count is very good for Vivi. He does really have enough to shut Dark down. So to say, if he was going over the right hand side to try and get the TC down, for instance, he does not have enough throwing X-Men. So despite the fact that Dark doesn't really have any fortifications over here to protect himself with just a TC, um, well, we cannot really do much of anything against it. He can try and still get a few villagers down over here because we have more than 15 left from Dark on the right hand side. So if the red player tries to garrison, there are 42 villagers here. There are... 51 villages over here, the Dark Scat, and only 15 garrison in spades. So if he plays his cards right, he might end up piloting a lot of economy from Dark. He might end up getting a lot of villages down. There's an extra TC coming up for Dark right now because of exactly that reason. If Vivi realizes about this, if Vivi's paying attention over here, he might be able to deny this TC or at the very least delay it or at the very least 
uh, caused it to come up, but a huge cause, right? So we see some villagers going down, but it's not enough damage, and Dark's going to get the TC up. He can only garrison, though, still only 15 villagers over here, so a few will still be uh, left out, and he's not even garrisoning Dark! Only now realizes about the TC, and he's lost a lot of villagers, still ahead by about 30 workers, 40 workers actually, compared to Vivi. But he's taking a lot of damage over there. You know what? We have the Rams coming in front from uh, Vivi on the right hand side. He went for a siege workshop. There are Rams coming in over here from Dark as well. Both these players putting a lot of pressure. I like Vivi's position a little bit better because he's keeping the villagers underneath the castle over here. And he's able to repair the, the Rams with that. Instead, Dark on the other hand, he's got the Rams kind of farther away so you can really repair these and this is going to come at a huge cost for dark to keep this castle up as well a lot of extra stone he needs to invest another castle is coming up over here but there's a third ram coming in from bb he's done a great job so far at this point in time the castle count is five to four favoring bb doesn't have loose in this one but he's still on five castles and now dark now that he's got in this one He's actually on five, castle himself, five castles himself as well, but he might end up losing this one. At the very least, seems to me that he should end up losing this one. And the cataphracts coming out from Dark would allow him to clean out the throwing axe man. Hey. This is extremely important for Vivi. He spent a lot of resources over here. This castle doesn't crumble. He doesn't get any damage done with these units. And it seems like it's going to be the case that he doesn't get any damage done over here. Now with the Magnal coming out from Dark, he will clean out the Rams. If you take a look at this economy, Dark's gonna have, in the next minute or two, enough resources to click out to the Imperial Age. And that's gonna be extremely bad news for Vivi. Once Dark starts getting access to trebuchets and starts pumping the trebuchets out, he'll be able to take the castles down, the fortifications down from Vivi. And suppress the blue player who doesn't really have enough military units to defend himself. So well done! Castle stays up over here for Dark. The Rams go down from Vivi. And if you take a look at the resources, it is the case that the red player will be on his way to the Imperial Age in a little bit. He's got already enough gold and he's getting very close in terms of food. He's not giving any, any extra villagers. And there we go, Imperial Age should be on the way for Dark in the next few seconds. Vivi. Not even close. He's got still a lot of stone to potentially go for another castle drop, but where and what is he going to achieve with it? Seems to be just playing defensive right now, playing reactive. And while it was a very nice comeback attempt, the potential for you was looking pretty good once he started dropping the castles. It wasn't enough for, for him to catch up. It allowed him to close the gap a little bit. But he still finds himself behind by about 15 villagers. More than that right now. 17. Yeah, and Dark's got enough uh, military units out that he should be able to defend himself against whatever he goes for. Dark should have it. Um, at this point already, yes. He's less than 2 minutes away from the Imperial Age and once he gets there... He'll start pumping traps, so we'll see traps coming out from the north castles, taking down the fortifications from BB, taking down towers, TCs, and striping the blue player away from any defenses, thus leaving his economy completely vul vulnerable. On the left hand side, we're gonna have another set of traps coming out over here from the red player to take BB's castles down too. We should resign in 80 seconds. Let's see. 50 right now. Could be. Another castle coming out for Dark. And he gets to the Imperial Age. So VV, who is not even close to having enough resources to go up to the Imperial Age, knows he's behind, but doesn't really call the GG. Not yet, that is. 
Guess he's just going to wait until the traps start popping here. Hey, Tewas! This map looks crazy. Yes! I would imagine you might have seen this one before. It's Aslan. It's the one inspired in a cave. And at the center we have a lot of fishing, although a lot of this is depleted already. And then to the corners we get extra minerals. Yeah, there we go. Vivi calls a GG, but it was just a matter of time, I would imagine. Let's go and take a look at the achievements really quickly before hopping back out and waiting for game number 3. We'll see for Meditary a better KD for Vivi. Getting close to 11 to 10. For economy, a stronger economy for Dark. And it's not even close at all. Check that out. 58,000 to 49,000. We have a 9,000, actually uh, an 11,000, sorry. What am I talking about? The 9,000 lead, sorry, for Dark, yeah. <laughs> 9,000 lead over there for him. For society, we see a higher work account for Dark at the end of the game. But then in earlier stages of the game, he had a much larger villager lead over Vivi, especially around this area. You can see that he was approaching twice the villager count compared to the bull player. Yes, APM. Looking a little bit better for Dark. The waterfalls are great, but they do kind of obstruct the view quite a bit. They kind of occlude the units. And we had some instances of units running behind the waterfalls that we couldn't really keep track of. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to change this, perhaps, to something that's got... Does Age of Empires support transparency? Because if there was a mod for, you know, somewhat translucent... Waterfalls, that'd be great so that we don't completely remove these. Well, anyway, let's go back. There we go! Game number three is here! Finally, let's go! So, game number two went in favor of Dark. We have a 2 0 situation over here in favor of the Rajan kid. While Vivi, well, Vivi's gotta clutch it up over here. The only way back for him into the series is a reverse sweep. If he loses this game, this being match point, he'd uh, get knocked down to the loser's bracket. If Dark loses this one, of course, he still has two more chances of making up for it. So, so far, it's looked great for uh, Dark, and it seems like he's not really struggled too much over here. And you kind of wonder, I said at the very beginning of the series, I wouldn't really count Vivi off the, over here. I really wouldn't count him out, sorry, because... He's had a lot of extra tournament experience, and Dark seems to struggle with tournaments quite a bit. And we saw that in the past. Uh, not every time, like for instance, he did really well in the extra qualifier for Red Bull Wallalo. But he's not performed quite as well in, in some of the other tournaments. And over here, this doesn't seem like it's affecting him at all, actually. So it makes me wonder if this is because of the tournament being B tier. I wouldn't really know. Anyway, notice how Dark's ship just zooms past Viva's ship over here because it's playing Berbers. So speaking about civilizations, Dark Save is going to give him 10% faster moving villagers and 10% faster moving ships. Berbers will also get in addition to that 15 and 20% cheaper stable uh, unit production in the castle and imperial age. And then for the team bonus, well, the team bonus is going to be access to Ginny Tor. While Lithuanians for Vivi, on the other hand, will have 150 extra food upon starting the game. So that makes it a little bit smoother for you to start going into water earlier. As you do not really need to, you can redistribute your economy so that you're able to go for the dock sooner. And then on top of that, we'll see for Lithuanians also. 10% faster, moving skirmish and spear line units. They get one extra attack on Knights and Lycha units per each relic garrison up to four relics. And for the team bonus, let's see for the team bonus. Um, what what is it for the Lithuanians? The monasteries work twenty percent faster, right? Yes. Okay, I think that's it. Yes, the monasteries work twenty percent faster. You still do recall everything and just need a little bit longer. I have no clue where he is. And last I heard, Argentina is quite big. It is. It is. Just so you know, I think it takes about six hours to go from the northmost point in Argentina to the southmost point. 
if I'm not mistaken, about six hours by plane. From where I live to the capital city, it takes about two hours by plane. So I'm not really sure what kind of distance you'd be able to cover in two hours by plane on. And in a different situation, probably in Europe, it, it'll be a couple countries, perhaps? Like, full countries? Anyway, Felix coming up for dark. He's going up on 34 workers. Doesn't seem like it's going to be enough for him to fast castle though, will it? He's got only two fishing ships. He might be able to go up, but I'm wondering if he's gonna have to sell the stone. Starting to collect some gold. Did the guy have buildings attack? Nah, they're just there for decoration. I think you can actually target these. I think you can destroy the buildings, but you cannot really do much of anything. Or uh, you, you cannot convert these. These do not attack you back. There we go. But yeah, I would imagine a hero is most likely... He's most likely in Buenos Aires. Or Buenos Aires, as they say in English. So far? Yeah, so good for Dark. Still, the village is on the way for Vivi, and the scout from Dark takes down Vivi's scout with a much, much lower initial HP count. Just because of the fuel H boom, or boost that he gets for the units. Oh, -ho! Dark's actually trading over here, I hadn't realized. Check this out, he's getting 91 with per trip, uh, actually gold per trip. Let me take a look, where are the jumps from? VV. Where are they? Okay, 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 okay. He's got one over here. Wow! 201 gold per trip! VV's junks are actually trading. But the farthest most... Dark over here from uh, Dark. So he's getting a lot of extra resources. I, I wonder then how much gold he's got in front trading. It's been actually better for Dark. I think he might have started trading earlier. And Vivi's trying to catch up now. By the way, I'm curious. Isn't the sword called Excalibur with the X? Or is it with the S? I'm curious now that I saw your name. Excalibur AOA. There we are. Nice villager pick. From Dark. Beautiful pressure from the red player. Both well, guys are going out to the castle age at about the same time. So Dark was unable to straight up click up to the castle age. And Vivi, he went up to the fuel age a little bit later with a stronger economy, mind you. And he was able to click up to the castle age basically right away. So that puts him in a good spot. Oh, good. Demo shot. So far, so good. Dark's going to end up getting water, water control by the looks of it. We have some navy production for you, but it's very small. And you know, compared to Dark's Navy. 
We have six fire galleys for Dark. We have one fire galley for Vivi. He's going for a few demo rafts over here. I'm really sure exactly what he is hoping to get with demo rafts. Perhaps just the junks. We'll see. Vivi! Rip! Well, that fire is gone. Soon. Dark's not only putting pressure on water, but he's also gonna start going for some knights over here, so putting pressure on land. We have double stables for Vivi. We have triple stables for Dark up in the north. Well, the knights keep on marching on from Dark on the left hand side. We'll see that he's got his navy taking the jocks down on the right hand side as well. So it seems like he's doing a much better job at getting water control, and he's gonna be putting pressure on, uh, on land as well while Vivi. Just trying to focus on land for the most part, but he doesn't seem to achieve too much just yet. Oh, villager goes down from Vivi. Not quite! Oh yeah, there we go! Villager goes down. Dark cannot really take the Spearman over here, so he'll get cleaned up. But he does have additional TCs on the way as well, so he's gonna be on 4 TCs very soon. While Vivi, Vivi is on 4 TCs himself, so he prioritized land a little bit more. He's got the TCs already up, but notice that Dark's got in the War Galley upgrade, so these are fire ships. No fire galleys anymore, that means this TC is a goner. This TC is a goner, and that means we're gonna have two TCs left for Vivi to work with, while Dark is going to have full water control. He's gonna have five TCs, actually no, four TCs. This is the fourth one. And still, double the TC count compared to Vivi. Cheaper stable unit production as well. So that's good. Here we go. Good defense for Vivi. Suffices for the time being, but shouldn't be the case for much longer, of course. Dark keeps on producing more and more military units. Eventually, he should be able to overpower Vivi's defenses. But the Knights and the Monks, even with conversions, would be insufficient against what Dark's got to work with right now. Oh, nice conversions over there. Doesn't seem like it's gonna be enough. The camels from dark doing a lot of uh, a lot of damage over here, and we will end up pushing these away still. Got significantly more units, even if they are generally lower HP. Yeah, but he calls a GG right there. He cannot keep on going over here for much longer. That's interesting because he was actually kind of winning the fight over here for a moment, but then the extra units from Dark kind of uh, tipped the scale in his favor a little bit. And Vivi just goes on to call it, so it's going to be a clean sweep over here. Dark gets a 3-0 score against Vivi. After game number 3, let's take a look at the achievements. We'll see for military. Uh, nice KD over here for... Dark ends up getting a better than 2 to 1 KD ratio with an economy that's significantly stronger compared to Vivi's as well by about 1300 resources or close to it. In the end, he benefits the most from profit, uh, from trade profit. Higher work count as well. Nice count over there and 4 APM. A little bit higher for Dark.